compiler. Um, so as I said, all instructions are just one byte and there's an optional two byte uh, argument to it. So if we go and look at some uh, normal Python bytecode on the left that we've already seen, you know, instruction uh, uh, arguments, if they've remapped their stack to, you know, OX64 has been remapped to OX44, OX47 has been remapped to OX11, et cetera, et cetera. If we can uh, take a known set of .pies and m compile them into bytecode, for a standard Python and then compile them into bytecode for the obfuscated Python using the obfuscated runtime, then we'll get uh, a list of this bytecode and then we can just diff these two bytecode si streams and we can say, oh, cool, right, uh, you know, 6.4 has gone to 4.4, 4.7 4 has gone to 11. We do this for enough Python source code and then we'll hit all the, all the bytecode instructions and then we've, uh, then we've got the new mapping and we can rewrite the opcode.py and then we're good. We're, you know, even though they've juggled it up, we can still work out what the instructions are. So for this example, Obviously, we can, we've got these uh, mappings here, and you just keep doing it for like a shit ton of Python, and eventually you'll get all the opcode mappings out. As I said, everybody distributes uh, the runtime in these package files. The runtime contains all the normal Python modules, you know, os.py and sys.py. We've got access to those as well because they're standard, standard library Python modules. Um, so if you compare the obfuscated PYCs that the, uh, they're distributing and then a normal PYC which you've compiled, you get this opcode mapping back out which is pretty, pretty useful. Uh, to do this in the tool, I created a new file format which is probably a bit of a grand term, uh, PYB file format which just means that we're dumping out raw Python bytecode to disk. It allows me to sidestep the fact that I probably don't know how they're marshalling things up. So it's just a new, a new format that we can produce two streams that are much easier to diff. I don't have to go through that stage of unmarshalling their PYCs. Um, I'll show you a, uh, uh, so this is like step by step. First we've got to find the version of Python uh, that the obfuscated runtime is running. Uh, we need to compile the bytecode with the exact same version. So if they're running 2.5.4, we need to compile our PYBs with 2.5.4, otherwise we won't get streams that are perfectly in sync and we'll get less collisions um, for, the, for the plain text attack. Um, so find out the, the version. We use a standard library Python to, to compile up all the PYBs from in process. Uh, we compile up the PYBs from in process of the obfuscated runtime, compile up all the PYBs and now we've got two systems that we can diff. Uh, we diff them, uh, we get our new uh, bytecode mappings and then we rewrite opcode.py and for, for unpyc we need to write opcodes.py which is its equivalent of it and then we're good to go. So even though they've gone to all this effort, now we've remapped their opcodes, we understand what their byte streams mean and we can start to decompile. Um, again, we're only getting this because we're working in memory at the Python layer, so, so it's quite useful. Um, and this is where I'm going to demo and things will fail. <coughs> so, uh, so I've got a little test application, it's really lame, but uh, it, it, sh it shows the point. Uh, RePDB is my uh, reverse engineering version of PDB, so we'll start that up and we'll have a look at the, uh, the uh, oh, I'll put it into the middle of the screen. Uh, so we'll just set a project. Uh, you can see all our source code is going to be dumped out to a particular directory and you can see the project uh, you know, was, was created here. Uh, all our PYBs are going to be going out into here. So I'll just get my cheat sheet so I don't fail at the, uh, at the paths. So first we're going to generate the, uh, the reference PB, uh, PYBs. So just gen, ref, 2.6 and a path to all the standard library modules. It's just a stand, you know, the, the standard module set, the PYs. So um, we compile all those up. And uh, so we're compiling them into PYCs. So we've got like a, a good, uh, we know we've got a good compile and then we're taking them to PYBs. Um, so we've done all that, that's good. And now we do the same for the obfuscated Python bytecode so we can get out our sets. So gen two six. And this time we give it the path to the, uh, the all the PYCs which are distributed, you know, the modified PYCs. Uh, I've created my own, uh, you see, this, this is the Python 262 is a standard, standard compiled runtime. This one here is one that I've modified that will do opcode remapping. So we compile up everything here. It got a bunch of warnings but that's because I haven't cleaned up my code properly. And now we just tell it to remap and it will take those two um, byte streams and, and diff them together. And so you can see uh, further up here where it's finding bytecodes and remapping. So you can see, you know, binary right shift, it was at 63, it's moved to 64. So we found all the shifts 
um, and now uh, we're going to rewrite the opcode.py. So we say yes, we want to rewrite the opcode.py. And now if we look at here, you can see there's uh, all the PYBs that were produced for the obfuscated, all the PYBs that we produced for the reference. And then in the libs, we've got a new opcode.py uh, remapped by Pyretic. And then these are all the new uh, opcode listings and equivalent. Oh, equivalent for the opcodes.py. Uh, it's just the equivalent file for the, for the umpy C. Uh, so we've remapped the byte code, so now we're in a position that we can understand what the byte streams mean. Uh, and we've probably really got to hurry up. Uh, so in memory comp decompilation versus static, obviously all the decompilers at the moment take files on disk and uh, decompile them by accessing those serialized objects that we spoke about in the, in the marshaled PYC. In memory, obviously we're going to access the, the bytecode from the function object co.code object um, because then everything will be automatically unmarshaled and we can, uh, we can get access to that at runtime. Uh, we're going to have to hurry up. So as I said, a top code, uh, a, a top level Python object doesn't have a code object which is a real pain. So at runtime there's no code object for us to decompile. Um, this means that we have to use, um, I've termed it uh, source code reconstruction. I'm not sure if that's a proper term or not, but rather than decompiling the stream of bytecode, we're prodding and poking at a lot of the objects and asking questions at them in the runtime. And then from, from the answers to all those questions, we've got have a good guess at what they actually look like in source code. Um, so when we're working in memory decompiling, so if we can get access to a function, we can get access to the code object and decompile that. Five minutes, awesome. Um, <laughs> Uh, if we're recon uh, doing reconstruction at runtime, we need to query a lot of the objects. Um, so we'll talk about, uh, say if this is the source code, um, these objects are obviously top level, so we need to use reconstruction on those, so we have to query a lot of the objects. This function actually has, uh, you know, it's got a CO code object, so we can just use standard decompilation there. Um, there's some stuff that we can and can't get out of reconstruction. So obviously you can see here that bar uh, is calling test function three. From reconstruction, we can never tell that, that it's called test function three. We only get the return from that. Uh, similarly with foo that was initially set to nine and then was set to ten, we'll never know that it was initially set to nine. We only get it because uh, when it's at ten because that's the state from which we're, we're asking the question of it. So we have no pre-state history. Um, so it's not perfect. But remember, we're looking for bugs. We're not looking to completely uh, re-get the, the Python source code. So it's good enough for finding bugs. And in realistic applications, most of the functionality is actually in the classes and the functions, not at the top level. So if we can get roughly right, it's good enough for finding bugs. So it's not perfect, but it's good enough. And that's just saying what I've said. So the Pyretic Toolkit, this is what I wrote to kind of mean that I didn't have to do all this manually. Uh, Obviously, it came from my real need to actually find some bugs. Uh, it's kind of in three uh, sections. Uh, there's the uh, decompilation section and, and uh, source code reconstruction that we've just spoke about. And it will do three types of decompilation depending on uh, the kind of obfuscations which are in place and the access that you have. So there's file system traversal module object decompile, which means that you're walking the file system, uh, you've got access to the file system, you've got access to their PYCs. Um, and you will take those PYCs and they also give you access to their unmarshalling. So they haven't restricted access to their unmarshalling. You can take the files off disk, unmarshal them, throw them in memory into the decompiler and get the source code back out. Um, oh. There's file system traversal. So you've got access to the code on disk but you don't have access to the unmarshalling. Um, so this means you have to do the source code and reconstruct and, uh, sorry, the source code reconstruction and the uh, actual decompile on the objects that you can access with the CO code object. Um, again, you get pretty good uh, decompilation out of this but not perfect, not as good as the first case. And then this case is when you don't have access to anything on disk. You've only got access to the objects in memory. Uh, so you've got to do, you know, every, you're, you're not traversing. Uh, the file system, so that means you can only decompile anything which has been instantiated at the point that you're in state. So a lot less code gets decompiled. You can only uh, get access to something that's actually been instantiated in memory at the time, but you don't have access to anything on disk. So you know you'll get less code decompiled, but at least you'll get something. Uh, this is the opcode remapping which you saw demoed earlier. Um, so it's all packaged up in a nice, easy to use way, so you don't have to do it all by hand. And then there's uh, the, the re-PDB, which is kind of my version of PDB. It builds on it, just super classes out PDB, um, but it allows you to access uh, lots of extra functionality, which is useful for assessing uh, the code uh, at runtime. And uh, things like it call through to third-party modules like uh, 
Pi call graph so you can just get a nice call graph out and actually understand what that code's doing at a very high level. Um, so yeah, some future directions. You know, there's lots of lots of potential to actually take this more uh, usable by other people rather than just me. Um, I'll just show you the the decompilation of the three types, and then I'll be kicked off. I think. So we've already done all the remapping. So we've got the opcodes. So now we're going to do uh, the three decompilations. So you can see how the source code kind of differs and degrades when you're doing the pure in memory stuff. Uh, so we do, first we'll do the file system traversal. So file system traversal, so file system traversal, unmarshal and decompile. And this is the uh, you know the silly test application which I pulled up in using the obfuscated Python runtime which I compiled. So it's pretty quick because uh, it was a simple application. So we'll go to our source code and then this ridiculously long path. Yeah, we're there. Uh, so this is the PYC that's been decompiled through the first method. You can see it's pretty good. Um, you know, it, you get some uh, you know, strange things where things are specified as longs, but the, the you know it's a pretty a pretty good decompilation. You'll see things change when we're doing the pure uh, the pure memory stuff. So we'll do this again uh, with uh, file system mem decompile to the same path. Again, pretty quick. And so it's in a different, and you've guessed it, all the way back out. And we're there. You'll see here uh, things like this was a function call, but we only get the return value from that function call for the reasons that I said earlier. And you'll see that some of the classes kind of have a, an elongated name because that's where we got the, uh, the in memory when we were asking a question of that class object. This is the answer that we got. So. Again, not perfect, but good enough for finding bugs, definitely. And then the uh, the pure memory decompile. Uh, we need to obviously import the object. So if we import the test app, and then we do a uh, pure mem. Oh, actually, I'll show you. It's, I'll show you it's in. So you can see that it's actually in uh, you know in the namespace of the of the debugger. Uh, so if you do a pure mem decompile on this object, so obviously we're not passing it a path anymore, we're passing it an object because we're assuming that we don't have access to the path. It will do the same thing. Oh. And if we go to the mem object, now we don't have a long path. And you'll see that it, you know, it's come out again, it kind of, you know, we only get the return values, um, but it's pretty much similar to the previous one. So uh, the decompilation is pretty good and we had no access to anything on disk. This was source code coming out of an instantiated object in memory which um, Obviously, it's a simple test app, but it's pretty powerful what you can do with that um, moving forward. So I think I've completely run out of time. Uh, if I can get back to the Prezi, fail. Uh, so completely run out of time. Uh, are there any questions? Awesome. That means nobody followed. Even better. Um, the other thing that I'm going to announce is there was a there was a hack cup for a lot of teams, uh, a lot of hacking teams playing in a football competition yesterday. Uh, so these are the results to that. Team ZA won, and they won a load of tickets to um, uh, Echo Party down in Argentina. So that's pretty cool. And uh, Nico, who put this cup on, uh, is going to be throwing it again next year. So if people are hackers that like football, which I know is a strange mix because that means athleticism and getting out from the basement. Um, but it will be on next year, so if you want to enter a team, uh, get in touch with Nico Weissman and uh, he'll give you all the details. Other than that, thank you. <laughs>